Nikki Linsall is Director of Operations and Ben Hockman, Program Manager at Public Practice. Public Practice was formed in 2017 at the GLA by Finn Williams and Pooja Agrawal. And its aim is to build the public sector's capacity for proactive planning and place shaping. So perhaps both of you, you could uh, tell me, uh, how did you get involved with public practice and what are you doing at the moment? My journey to public practice is a pretty convoluted one, um, but in a nutshell, I've always been working in not-for-profits and social enterprises, and a lot of my journey has been around questioning the public good or public value of the architect profession. Um, and then I kind of did a pivot into working in people and analytics in the tech industry, looking at sort of mapping spaces and mapping people. Um, and then just sort of serendipity kind of came about and heard about the GLA setting up public practice and they were looking for people to help kind of put it into practice. And it just felt like the right time and the right sort of the same values that I always pushed, particularly around sort of the need for people place practical responses to issues rather than big picture stuff that I think I was getting a bit frustrated working in academia and talking about the high level stuff and I really wanted to put some things into practice and this just felt like the natural kind of next step. I think my uh, also have quite a varied background as you well know Peter but um, most immediately as a, a planner so a trained planner but also have quite a lot of other uh, experience in talks of different sectors and I had moved back to the UK at the end of last year after living abroad for a year and um, I could have missed being a potentially being an associate but I missed the last recruitment round um, and yeah I was kind of lucky enough to, to have to this role come up come up within the organization and at the moment the main piece of work I'm doing is going uh, we're looking at all of the expressions of interest from local authorities and um, and also assessing the, the many applications we've had from potential associates and we're starting that process of, of matching potential associates to the roles across the area. So has COVID-19 increased the demand for the skills delivered by cohorts? Certainly from the interest from associates, um, we've obviously got a huge amount of interest. Um, it's a little bit bittersweet, I would say, because it, it's obviously exciting to have loads of people want to join our programme and go and work in local government, but it's also that um, yeah, sign of perhaps things to come around the job market. Um, which is, yeah, tricky. Yeah, I think <clears throat> from what I've seen is a, a slight refocusing of what the kind of roles that are coming forward, a lot about town centre regeneration, community engagement. Um, there's kind of an expansion into those kind of areas or a broader remit of the kind of roles that authorities are looking to mm -hmm. public practice for. So generally, what, what roles are or have local authorities been looking at? What, what do uh, public practitioners actually do generally in local authorities around London? For me, coming as an outsider uh, at the beginning of this year, I'd always imagined it as kind of architects and urban designers that were going in and being very, um, you know, kind of designery. But actually, the and that's kind of how it started off in a way, but there's much more about the kind of breadth of experience and much more about kind of building relationships, both with communities, but also across authorities and within authorities. So yeah, there's a real, there's kind of a lot of project management, de development management type roles, but also, yeah, some really interesting community building and um, engagement roles that are, are emerging and have been well established by quite a few of the current and previous cohorts. One conversation I had with an authority recently was around sort of this experience of 2020 has just sort of highlighted the need to have team members that are willing to roll their sleeves up and sort of put on different hats and sort of try out new things and sort of be quite cross-disciplinary and willing to, yeah, kind of push themselves into maybe areas of, that they weren't so comfortable with, but using their skill set and their attributes. It's been interesting to see that line managers and authorities are sort of seeing that it's not necessarily about the job description it's about the type of person that they want to recruit which i think i've seen over the journey of public practice to date becoming a kind of stronger thing recently do people tend to if it works out they tend to then take get a permanent role in that local authority generally or do you move them on somewhere else afterwards that depends on the position that is ultimately one of the you know a big achievement for the, the organization is when um, people do stay on in those roles or or decide to stay on in the public sector in another role. 
Um, so those are big achievements. I think anecdotally, definitely, I really like hearing the stories, mm -hmm. speaking with associates about either the fact that it's opened up opportunities they may not have considered, or have, yeah, kind of, they really feel they've been able to, to get involved in, in a different way to how they may have conceived earlier in their careers. So do you see it as somewhere that actually recruits people into the public sector who might normally have gone into private practice? Well, in terms of from a graduate point of view, or do you mean... Graduate point of view, or even professionals who are maybe looking for a new direction? I, th I think that's definitely the sort of premise of how we set up the programme initially was middle to latter career stages rather than early stage was, are you looking to sort of see things from a different point of view or are you looking for a different form of challenge? I think as we've grown or, or done this program a few times now, we're seeing that actually there's over three years plus experience or even end of year career and people coming who spent 20, 30 years running their own private practice, but would actually really like to see it from, from the other the other viewpoint um, so it's become I think a fairly open remit for lots of people at the different stages of their career um, and potentially in the future something we would be interested to look at is how we can sort of help support the, the more graduate sort of entry-level roles but that's certainly not something that we've got the capacity to do right now. How many people uh, can you draw on? You get big uh, numbers of applications when you advertise? So this latest round, I don't think we've sort of announced the figures yet, but we've had about double the amount that we normally get um, for our latest recruitment rounds. Um, and normally it's sort of, I think around, we're anticipating probably one to 10 ratio in um, people who apply to the pe people that we place. So it's pretty competitive. And what's really interesting when you read the bios and the applications from all these different people is they come from a beautiful spectrum. Um, of disciplines you're looking at a landscape architect then you're reading about you know sort of someone from a digital realm um, to someone who's sort of um, interested in civil engineering and infrastructure and it's just it's I think that's one thing that gets the team excited is um, about that broad re-questioning of what a sort of placemaking professional is and in turn that means that we get a really nice broad range of applicants Tom Copley, Deputy Mayor for Housing, in the Housing Task Force report that he produced just last week, I think it was, that uh, called for a stimulus package uh, through more housing produced by local authorities in London. Uh, uh, that's the sort of thing that uh, public practitioners can really help with. I think that's what's got a lot of people enthused, or a lot of the current and past associates enthused, is is yeah, it's delivering things that you, you hear a lot of talk of and you see some grand plans for, but um, yeah, seeing those things actually happen and being able to advocate for more of that. And obviously we all know it takes a lot of coordination and a lot of funding and political will to get these things, to get these things going. But that's definitely a big target of what we can do with the cohort that we have as well. That wider network is, is kind of keep amplifying that message and the positivity of it. So do you, do you have public practitioners in every London borough uh, and more than one in some? We've not quite reached every borough yet, but you know, that's definitely one of our ambitions. Um, we have certainly sort of some London boroughs that we've ended up creating and building quite a team in, um, what brings to mind. Enfield is sort of, we've got quite a nice sort of gaggle of associates there. Newham, we've been working quite a lot with Newham, really interesting roles there around community wealth building. Um, and they've obviously got a lot of growth in that, in that area. So there's some really interesting conversations come about out that borough, as well as the community engagement side. So I think that's, that's being pulled out, um, Barking and Dagenham. So we've placed, I think you spoke to Selassie actually a few weeks ago um, and her role that sort of sits across um, the kind of delivery arm and, and the council. So building there where else I don't know I think you see you do see a good range across the different types like inner and outer but you do what's what's quite not all across the board but it's where you see really pro growth areas they kind of seem to be really harnessing having having um yeah their own mini cohort within there or across the across the years there's a lot of really interesting knowledge sharing both within 
those particular authorities, but also across, yeah, it's a really good opportunity within those cohorts to kind of come together. We have uh, R&D program of bi-weekly, not every two weeks, um, where the, the cohort will come together. So there's really um, other communication, Slack and so on, where people are learning across different boroughs and, and outside London as well, that we have um, yeah, associates from the wider East and Southeast as well. A part of the public practitioners have to spend some time uh, involved in research and how you as a body actually uh, create better knowledge about how to deliver change for public authorities. One of Ben's first tasks when he joined public practice was a slightly unfair, like quite a tricky one, which was setting up our working groups. And that sort of spun out of our R&D program when we really want to encourage a kind of community of practice where we're really getting to the sort of detail of, okay, there's some great ideas, but how do offices actually put this in practice? So a lot of R&D is not really sort of the traditional sense of R&D. It's more about kind of resources and dissemination. It's sort of how do we create tools and how do we share our actual practice knowledge across, across authorities? And I think that's something that's become more and more important as we've developed as an organization is seeing our role as more of a kind of facilitator and creating systems and frameworks for people from other other authorities or boundaries to discuss and share their experiences not just the good but also like oh when I did that process actually those three things that I would definitely recommend not doing again and that kind of learning if we share that across I think that's how we can create a sort of wider network of sort of officer membership and yeah I think the working groups has been a success in that in that way yeah I think yeah there is the what is the R&D part of that is is helping kind of catalyze people new associates learning when they join but yeah then also as as the program's maturing is how we can help harness all of that information that people are learning beyond the cohorts and their, their colleagues and and others in, in authorities and so on so typically, what would be the subject matter of a workshop? What are the sort of topics that uh, people come together to discuss? Normally, and I've started since lockdown, so my experience of this has only been remote, but each would be hosted by an authority. So for instance, last week it was hosted by Epping Forest. So there would be a site visit, but what it was is you get the context of that authority. And then um, we, had, um, we had kind of a, a lecture on, lecture about discussion on biodiversity net gain um, and then so, so we're kind of feeding these different parts and also some practice reviews so associates will share what it is that they are working on um, and then a kind of mix of those but then other topics about planning reform or um, community engagement community wealth building um, so share, yeah, sharing those different practice as well as getting an understanding of the different developments that are happening in other host authorities what do you see as the sort of key issues for planning in London as we start to emerge, hopefully, from COVID-19? Good question. Such, <laughs> such, a, such a cheeky question. It's so hard to answer that. Um, we, ben and I were discussing before, you, uh, before we jumped on this call, like, what did we, like, what, what are our gut instinct thoughts? And I think we were saying how it's so hard to know right now what, I don't think we're out of it yet and I don't think we really know what the other side's going to look like and I think that's probably going to be one of the biggest challenges is how what kind of world are we going to live in how do we want to use how do we go to work do we go to work what, what, yeah there's so many unknowns that I think we were saying that maybe one of the roles right now is to be asking the right kind of questions to as many people as possible and maybe breaking down those sort of asking people that we wouldn't normally ask because I think there's a lot a lot of hidden knowledge that I think if we pulled all that together we could probably start to get an idea of, of what the future might hold regardless of uh, COVID or not. And I think from what I've seen through through the associates um, and what's happening on the ground and what we've seen in the response to COVID is the the, the flexibility of how so so many local authorities not just in London but you know, around the country have been able to respond locally to all kinds of issues about emergency response but also so I would argue that there is um, you know in London and beyond there is a strong call for kind of more devolution of power and, and funding to local authorities because they have the skills and the knowledge to be able to help um, 
yeah, help we build communities, help we build places and help direct development where it needs to go, notwithstanding whatever macro changes um, central government is, is looking to make to try and improve those processes. I think, yeah, the devolution to local authority is really important. Nikki and Ben, thank you very much for the work you do, but also thank you very much for your insights into what uh, public practice does as well. Thank you very much. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter.